Now we're going to go over a few more examples where we use implicit differentiation. Let's say we want to find dy over dx, in other words, the rate of change of y with respect to x, when we move along the curve of equation 3xy cubed minus 4x equal 10y squared. As we have seen, the key to implicit differentiation is to differentiate both sides of the equation, considering y as a function of x, even if y is not globally a function of x. So, we start by differentiating both sides with respect to x, considering y as a function of x. When I differentiate 3xy cubed, I have a product, I have 3 times the product xy cubed, so I use the product rule. And we obtain 3 multiplied by applying the product rule, derivative of the first factor is the derivative of x, so it is 1. Second factor y cube is unchanged, and then we have x multiplied by derivative of y cube. But y is considered as a function of x, so y cube is a cube of a function, and therefore we use the chain rule. We get the function y plugged inside the cubic function, so according to the chain rule, we get the derivative of the outside function, which is x cubed, evaluated at the inside function y. So we get 3y squared, but then we need to multiply by the derivative of the function inside. In this case, this function is y, so we multiply by dy over dx, which is the derivative of y. When we differentiate 4x with respect to x, x is a variable, so we just get 4. And when we differentiate 10y squared, we're going to get 10 times the derivative of y squared. And the derivative of y square again is the derivative of the square of a function, so we use the chain rule and get 2y multiplied by the derivative of y. Multiplying things through um, in the parent first parenthesis, this is what we obtain. 3y cubed plus 3xy square multiplied by dy dx minus 4 equal 20y dy dx. What we want is to obtain dy dx, so now all what remains to be done is to solve for dy dx. And to this end, we're going to put all the terms that contain dy dx on one side, let's say for instance on the right hand side, and all the terms that do not contain dy dx on the other side. In this case, the only terms that do not contain dy dx are 3y cubed and negative 4, and they're already on the other side. So this is what we obtain, and now we divide both sides by 20y minus 3xy squared, in other words, by the factor in front of dy dx, and we obtain that dy over dx is 3y cubed minus 4 divided by 20y minus 3xy squared. Now we consider exactly the same question, we want to find dy over dx, rate of change of y with respect to x, along the curve sine of xy equal x squared minus 3. Just as before, we differentiate both sides of the equation with respect to x, treating y as a function of x. And when we differentiate sine of xy, we have a composite. We are plugging xy inside the sine function. So we have a composite, we use the chain rule, we get the derivative of the outside function, which is sine, so we get derivative of sine, that is cosine, evaluated at the inside function, that's going to be cosine xy, but then we have to multiply by the derivative of the function inside, the function in inside is xy, so we have cosine xy multiplied by the derivative with respect to x of the product xy. On the other end, on the right hand side, we have the derivative with respect to x of x squared minus 3. This is just 2x. Now, we have to differentiate xy, and this is a product. And so we use the product rule, and we obtain derivative of the first factor, which is 1, multiplied by second factor unchanged, y plus first factor x multiplied by derivative of the second factor, derivative of y is dy over dx. Multiplying things through, we obtain y cosine of xy plus x cosine of xy multiplied by dy dx equal 2x. Solving for dy over dx, we obtain 
2x minus y cosine xy divided by x cosine xy. One more example of that kind. We want to find dy over dx along the curve of equation x cosine y minus 3y sine x equal 1. Just as before, we start by differentiating both sides of the equation with respect to x, treating y as a function of x. On the right hand side, I differentiate a constant, so I get 0. On the left hand side, if we start with the derivative of x cosine y, this is a product, so we use the product rule. The derivative of the first factor is 1 multiplied by second factor unchanged, cosine y, plus x multiplied by derivative of the second factor. Second factor is cosine y. y here is treated as a function of x, so I have a function plugged inside the cosine function. I differentiate that using the chain rule. So I obtain derivative of the outside function evaluated at the inside function. That would be derivative of cosine, negative sine, evaluated at y. And then I have to multiply by the derivative of the function inside, in that case the derivative of y, which is dy over dx. To differentiate 3y sine x, this is again a product of the function y with the, product, with the function sine x. And so we apply again the product rule. Derivative of the first factor, that's derivative of y, that's just dy over dx, multiplied by second factor unchanged, that's sine x, plus first factor unchanged is y, multiplied by derivative of the second factor, which is just cosine x. All this is equal to zero. If we multiply things through and simplify, here is what we obtain, cosine y minus x sine y times dy over dx minus 3 sine x times dy over dx minus 3y cosine x. We want to solve for dy over dx, so we're going to look at the terms that do contain dy over dx and put them together on one side. So let's say, for instance, we leave them on the left-hand side. And the terms that do not contain dy over dx we put them on the other side. So the negative 3y cosine x, when put on the right-hand side, is going to become positive 3y cosine x, and cosine y is going to become negative cosine y. So now I divide both sides by negative x sine y plus 3 sine x, in other words, by whatever factor I have in front of dy over dx, and I obtain dy over dx is cosine y minus 3y cosine x divided by x sine y plus 3 sine x. Let's say now that we want to find the equation of the tangent line to a certain curve at a given point. Here the curve has equation x cube y square equal negative 3xy and the point at which we're uh, considering the tangent line has coordinates negative 1, negative 3. So by definition, this is the line through the point of coordinates negative 1, negative 3, and that has slope the value of dy over dx when x is negative 1 and y is negative 3. So we need to calculate dy over dx. To this end, we proceed the same way as before. We differentiate both sides of the equation of the curve with respect to x, treating y as a function of x. On the left-hand side, I have a product, so I use a product rule. Derivative of the first factor x cubed is 3x squared. I multiply that by the second factor y squared unchanged. Then I have first factor x cubed unchanged multiplied by the derivative of the second factor which is y squared. And the derivative of y squared is the square of a function. So I use the chain rule and get 2y multiplied by the derivative of y. And on the right hand side, similarly, I have again uh, product, so I use again the product rule. I get negative 3 derivative of x, which is 1, multiplied by y, so I get negative 3y. And then negative 3x multiplied by the derivative of y. We want to solve for dy over dx, so I'm looking at the terms that contain dy over dx, and I'm going to put them on the same side, and put the terms that do not contain dy over dx on the other side. So I obtain putting all the terms containing dy over dx on the left-hand side, 
I obtain dy over dx multiplied by 2x cubed y plus 3x. On the other side, I have negative 3y and also this 3x squared y squared that I put on the right hand side gives me negative 3x squared y squared. Dividing both sides by the term in front of dy over dx, I obtain this expression for dy over dx. And now what we want is the value of this expression when x is negative 1 and y is negative 3. Plugging things in, what we obtain is negative 18 third, in other words, negative 6. So now, the tangent line we are looking for is the line through the point of coordinate negative 1, negative 3, of slope negative 6. So it has equation y plus 3 equal negative 6 times x plus 1. Finally, let's say we have uh, a particular curve in the plane of equation xy squared minus 2y equal 2, and we want to know if this curve admits horizontal tangent or vertical tangents, and if yes, uh, at what point. An horizontal tangent is going to happen if dy over dx is equal to 0 for a point on the curve, while a vertical tangent is going to happen if dy over dx goes to infinity when we approach a certain point on the curve. So we need to know what dy over dx is, and to do that, as usual, we differentiate both sides of the equation with respect to x, treating y as a function of x. On the right-hand side, I have the derivative of a constant, in other words, 0. On the left-hand side, I have derivative of xy squared, that's a product, I use a product rule. So I get 1 times y squared plus x times derivative of y squared, which is 2y dy over dx because y squared is the square of a function and therefore it is differentiated using the chain rule. Then we have minus 2 derivative of y. We put together the terms that contain dy over dx. I keep it on the left hand side and therefore dy over dx is multiplied on one end by 2xy on the other by negative 2. And the only term that do not contain dy dx is just y squared I move it from the left hand side to the right hand side, it becomes negative y square. Divide both sides by 2xy minus 2 and we get y square equal, I'm sorry, we get dy over dx equal y square over 2 multiplied by 1 minus xy. You see that this is 0 only if y equals 0. If y equals 0, the top is 0 and the bottom is not, because at the bottom we would get just 2. So then dy over dx would be 0. But there is no point on the curve for which y equals 0, because if you plug y equals 0 in the equation of the curve, then you get 0 equal 2. In other words, this curve does not intersect the line y equals 0. So that means that there is no point on that curve with an horizontal tangent. On the other hand, we're going to have a vertical tangent if 1 minus xy is equal to 0 for a point of coordinate xy on the curve. This is because in that case, if y minus xy is equal to 0, then y is not 0, so the top is not 0, but the bottom is, and therefore dy over dx is going to infinity. So, does that happen? If 1 minus xy is 0, then xy is 1, Multiplying both sides by y, we see that xy squared is unequal to y. So that means that xy squared minus 2y is really y minus 2y, so negative y. Since the equation of the curve is xy squared minus 2y equal 2, that means that the point is going to be on the curve if negative y equal 2, in other words, if y equal negative 2. So we want the condition that y is negative 2 and xy equal 1. If y is negative 2 and xy equal 1, then y is negative 1 half. I'm sorry, x is negative 1 half. And therefore, we have a point of intersection, uh, a point of coordinate xy that satisfies at the same time 1 minus xy equals 0 and the equation of the curve. This unique point satisfying that as coordinates negative 1 half, negative 2, 
and this is the only point where we have a vertical tangent. Now before turning to the, turning to the quiz on uh, implicit differentiation, you should do some homework. 